Where are you? Show yourself! In 2020, The Invisible Man begins with the woman. He's married. Elizabeth Moss plays Cecilia, married to a brilliant optics inventor named Adrian. Writer, director Lee Winnell sets the tone from the opening frame. We see Cecilia waking in Adrian's beautiful but eerily empty house. The music and pounding waves accentuate the tension. This is a woman in flight, prepared, determined to escape her abusive husband, who almost Go. stops her. In the days after staying with her sister's friend, Moss shows us the effect of the abuse. She's hollow inside, still recovering from the ordeal. And then she gets the news. Adrian's dead. What happened to him? He cut his wrist. Per his final wishes, you're getting $5 million. Contingent, of course, on the fine print. He can't be ruled to be mentally incompetent. But before we get back to the story, Let's take a look at how the team behind this Invisible Man is different. Director Lee Whannell comes from the horror world and has worked with the Saw and Insidious franchises. The film also comes from Bloomhouse Studios, known for movies such as The Purge or Get Out. And this is a bit of a change for Universal Pictures, who own the rights to The Invisible Man, who first appeared on the screen way back in 1933. Are you satisfied now, you fools? For years now, they've been trying to develop their classic movie monsters into their own interconnected cinematic universe. But after expensive messes like ugh, The Mummy. I saw her. She is real. There's a new, and I'd say smaller and smarter approach. In this monster movie, the biggest special effect is our mind. Even with Adrian's death, Cecilia still suspects she's being watched. And this is where the director pulls back and lets the empty spaces do the work for him. At first, the signs are incredibly subtle. An exhaled breath, the sheets being pulled back, an impression on a chair. Give the audience a wide shot of a kitchen and you can't help but interrogate every object with your eyes, looking for that change. What makes it all the more effective is when Cecilia starts sharing her suspicions, it sounds absurd, like this moment with Adrian's brother. You know exactly what I'm talking about. He's not dead. I just can't see him. Then, as Cecilia finds evidence, the story raises the stakes. This is gaslighting taken to the extreme, as the Invisible Man conspires to make Cecilia's claims look not only delirious, but dangerous. I think we get kicked out out and have a little girl's night, eat some cake. Yeah, I do like cake. <laughs> Oh my God, Sydney, are you okay? Why would you just stop? Stop! Again, the story doubles down with Adrian inflicting the most intimate abuse possible. In the age of Me Too, by switching the Invisible Man's focus to a woman's ordeal, the horror story has an unsettling sense of relevance. But it wouldn't work without Elizabeth Moss. At the beginning, she's mousy and withdrawn, but. As with so many of her performances, there's this spiky intensity there, especially as she gets the predator in her sights. Now that said, when the film shifts into more physical and visible wrestling matches, well, the results are a little hokey, but that's only because Moss makes the psychological effects of Adrian's reign of terror feel so real. In the end, The Invisible Man's most impressive trick is taking a story over a century old and making a film with a modern mix of scares and cheers. Four stars out of five. Eli Glaster, CBC News, Toronto.